do something kind of different today. Uh, we're going to build a reproduction of a 1920 Briggs and Stratton buckboard flyer. Believe it or not, in 1920, this was a street legal car. Uh, it had a two and a half horsepower bicycle motor on the back. It was basically just a wheel and a motor. And when you wanted to go, you dropped the wheel to the pavement and push the cart. Uh, my version has a three and a half horsepower uh, and a temporary spare from a car as a drive wheel. But other than that, uh, I've tried to keep it all original. Uh, and it's a whole lot of fun. It takes me and my wife around the neighborhood, no problem. Uh, being direct drive, I think it has a little bit better power transfer and uh, it, it gets up and goes pretty good. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is start working on the drive. I got this huge sprocket here. It's going to be right there. And this tube is going to be turned down to where it's a good fit in there. And then I'm going to weld a, a flange on it, cut that round, put a bolt pattern in it, thread it. I've got lug bolts instead of nuts. Uh, and I'll put a flange on the other, other end of this and that sprocket will be mounted on it. And I enlarge the hole on that sprocket. And turn the inside for a bearing fit and the outside uh, for the hole in the sprocket. I got my rotary table mounted here and I put a center finder in there and did my best to find the center of that bolt. I know that's not the best way. Putting a dial indicator and going around it would be the best. I made a mandrel. It's got a taper in it and it's bolted to the bottom and sitting in one of my uh, uh, T-slots. So it it's turns but that mandrel is being held in there and hopefully real well centered. This plate, the three-eighths hole on there, has got a little bit of slop, kind of bothers me, but I don't, it's like four or five thousand slop. I wish it wasn't there, but it is what it is. I turned that mandrel down just a little bit too far. So, what i got to do is drill four holes to match the uh, bolt pattern for that uh, Kia spare tire over there. So, I've got it set up. I, I got out on the internet and found it. It's 100 millimeters from bolt to bolt or 50 millimeters from the center. So I got it set at 50 millimeters. And I need to find the angle on here. There it is. Start at zero and then divide it by four. So 360 divided by four is 90. So I'm going to drill my first hole. And all I'm going to do is put a, a, a center, use a center drill, and mark it, and then I'll uh, take it to the drill press and drill them out to the uh, half, half 20 tap size, or drill size. First I've got to mark four holes, and when I do that, I'll take and uh, use the T-slots in my table and, and bolt this plate to it and then use a mill to cut that cut that round.
Well, I got it done. I cut that on the rotary table. Didn't go too good. I got a little mishap right here. Won't hurt a thing, but uh, I think the mill table moved on me while I was doing it. Uh, I've got these threaded for uh, 20, half inch 20 threads per inch. And I bored that out a little bit. That's going to have to be bored bigger. But uh, right now, we're going to make this. And it's got to have a shoulder on it that will go inside that piece that we just cut and two bearing fits. So I'm going to get started on that. Well, my rotary table didn't work so well for uh, cutting a disc. I uh, put a slug of steel there on the back and I'm going to see if I can turn it around. I got it roughed up with my, roughly cut with my bandsaw. I got a feeling it's going to slip, but we're going to try it. See what it does. Well, it may be slow going, but it looks like it's going to work. Unbelievably well. Cool. Heck yeah. I like it. Well, I just welded that with my 110 MIG without gas. The flux core gets better penetration. It looks kind of ugly, but I, I believe it's going to be a strong welding. Okay, welding that warped the disc a little bit. I'm going to throw them up. Steady rest was set up from before when I was turning this, so it should be uh, should be in exactly the right place.
Because this side's a little curved. That'll get it. Well, now all I got to do is fit a sprocket to that. Got to bore the hole in that sprocket and then put some holes in it and bolt the sprocket on. Then mount the motor plate and the motor right there. It's coming along. Uh, transfer punch would have been better, but I can't fit it in there. Well, it looks good to me. I need some kind of reference, so... I believe it's running true. Within ten thousands anyway. It's a good deal.
Yeah, I'm going to have to put a spacer right there and move the wheel that way to clear that shaft. I wanted to keep the width the minimum. But, what do I got there? About a half inch out. That way it gives me some chain adjustment without that shaft running into the motor, running the wheel. Keep everything as tight as I can. I can't move the motor over because it goes into the radius on that channel there. The slot will. I need to be able to put a nut on the bottom side. I'm going to slot this. Yeah, I'll have to put a spacer right there. And this right here pivots from the go-kart from the car. Can't call it a go-kart, it's a car. <laughs> According to Briggs and Stratton anyway. something you don't see every day. Carbon paper. I use it when I don't want to mess up my uh, or cut my drawing. I don't know why they cut the corners like that. But it'll be alright. That'll work. Now the fun part. Well, here it goes. I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, here it goes. 
This is kind of experimental. I hope it works. Hard to know exactly how much glue is in there, but we're going to find out, I guess. Well, it's been about three and a half, four hours. Probably more like three and a half. Uh, it's not too bad. Cool. <laughs> Looks small. Well, there it is. It did okay. I'm a little concerned about it being uh, making good contact in the middle here. I probably should have got a lot more elaborate on my uh, form to bend this, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, I'll uh, figure out how to make it work if it's not making good contact in there. Uh, now I got to uh, cut this seat down just a little bit. Uh, I made it oversized to use as a form, but I'm going to reuse it as the base of the seat.
So I've got to cut it down. Well, the details in this drawing are really not clear. And I thought this said seven degrees, like a, a seat back slope. And if I, if I transfer that to my uh, gauge here, sliding T-bevel gauge, comes out to like 14 degrees. Yeah, 14 degrees from vertical, and that says 7 as far as I can tell. And then uh, looking at some of these, some of the pictures for these old uh, buckboard flyers, some of them don't look like they have any slope. So I don't know if I need to put that slope in there or not. I'm just going to kind of experiment with it and see what it looks like. about the flies separating. Well, that looks like it did, I mean there's a little gap here and there. That's pretty good.
Okay, stuff like this is not going to be exactly like the original. Uh, obviously, I made it out of a piece of channel. Uh, but I looked on the plans, and I go back to the plans frequently for the drawings. They're not really some. There's some measurements, but I got to import it into CAD and double check my measurements uh, or measure it in the CAD program. But it's the uh, steering control is four and a half inches from this pivot point, so the steering rod, I guess you want to call it, ties it to the steering wheel. And then the uh, uh, tie rod between the two is three inches from this pivot point, so that's right there. I'm getting a little concerned about weight, so I'm going to build this down so that this is one inch wide right there. This is toward the tire here, and that'll give me some clearance away from the tire. And I'll, the control rods will be uh, three eighths of an inch. I think that's more than adequate. Okay, the wheel base is 30, which is 2 inches from this bracket. Looks like uh, my axle is 24 inch. Seems kind of short, but that's what it is. This is to put a uh, caster in the front wheels. I don't know if that's enough. I don't really know. Of course that's straight. So that'll be that much caster. wonder how many degrees that is.
Yeah, there it is, all welded. Took it to a friend's house. He's got really good welder. I did okay on some of it. Some of it not so good. I'm not a very good welder, but you don't get any better unless you try. But I'll do some grinding on it and painting and it'll look good. My brackets drew together when I uh, welded that. I guess I should have left more clearance in there to compensate for that. I have to figure out how to spread that out now. Well, one side fit really good. I got uh, some shoulder bolts ordered for that, shorter ones. Well, one side fit pretty good. Uh, I've got new uh, shoulder bolts ordered. They got a little nylon insert in them to stay locked. Uh, I ground down the other one. Had to touch up the paint on it. Got hot, kind of messed it up. Uh, that'll be for the other side, of course. Uh, getting excited about it. It's taking shape.
waiting for paint to dry. Yeah, my welds are getting better. Not bad for a 110 meg. Right here will be my engine lift or drive wheel lift. To bolt that right there. And then there'll be a 7 16 bolt that centers it with the tire. And that's what will lift the engine up. I don't have a 7 16 bolt yet. So I gotta paint that and transfer the holes there. I put three holes in there. Uh, if I don't have enough leverage, I'll put it in the top one. If, if I don't have enough lift, I'll put it in the lower one. Give me some options there. Anyway, i got to go get some bolts and paint that. Well, I got a little bit carried away. I got the screws today and I started putting it together and didn't really film any of it. Uh, but it's just basically bolts. Holding it together. There's setup I got on the uh, axle. If, if I'm not getting enough traction, I can move the pivot point up and it will make the motor or make the wheel dig into the pavement more. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. You know, most uh, go-karts or whatever have the weight of the go-kart and the people in it pushing down on the tire. Whereas this is just the weight of the motor and the wheel. Uh, still got to mount the seats they're sitting on there this is a uh, those are not the blocks I'm going to use but. I got to drill lengthwise through these and this one is a real short one It'll, I think it's one inch and these are three and a half inch but the, that's it won't be quite that much of a slope, but it, they lean back quite a bit. Who knows? I think it looks better further out. It'll be symmetrical with these.
Okay, I elevated the front end of this. I got that bolt out, unscrewed it. The twist drill is not long enough to go through this, but this spade bit, I got a quarter inch spade bit, which is, I don't know why they make a spade bit quarter inch, but they're quite a bit longer. Well, that about wraps up part one of the Briggs & Stratton Buckboard Flyer Build. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure and stay tuned for part two when uh, we get this thing on the road, I hope. Thanks for joining me. <laughs>